Hiya. Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. Um, and thank you to all of the new, new subscribers. That's uh, very much appreciated. On this video, I just wanted to talk to you about catapults because, you know, I've been searching through YouTube and you come across videos we you get recommended videos and there's a lot of people talking about catapults. Um, I see some of the people I follow have put posts on about catapults recently. Um, so I wanted to talk you through how to make these briefly and perhaps have a little hunt round, see if I can find a pair of forks to show you how to harvest them, process them and make it. Quite a lot of power. Um, I just, just, if you've never used a catapult before and you're thinking of using it, don't hold it like that. Don't hold it like that. The grip is sort of, that's the sort of grip that you want to be looking at. I mean, I don't actually hunt anymore, but I do sometimes carry it in my bag just in case. Um, it's an excellent hunting tool. Very effective. Traditionally, we've always made these catapult forks from ash, um, mainly because it's very suitable wood. It's very versatile, it can easily be manipulated, um, dries very, very hard, it's easy to work with, and they have a tendency to grow in this um, fork shape naturally. So that's that's what you need to use. That's what you need to look for. And you'll see, once you, if you start looking, you'll see these growing like this everywhere. Um, the hard bit is to get even, even um, growth on each, on each side. Well, I'm back at the car now. I've looked absolutely everywhere for a um, pair of forks and I've been unsuccessful, which is often the case. I'm just on the way back, but um, I'm pretty sure I saw something that might be half decent. So I'm hoping I'm in the right place. Forks there. That's kind of no, that's him. Okay, so I'm just going to talk you through this um, time lapse video. As you can see, we've got the we've got the forks; they're fresh, freshly cut. And what I did was leave the leave the forks long, and I've bent them at the top and squeezed them together to give me that more uh, more of a curved shape. 
And then I've tied them at the top with a shoelace. And the idea is to dry them out over several days. And eventually, once you've got the right um, position and they've dried, they'll stay in that position forever. So um, as you can see, um, sort of at this point in the video, they're sort of halfway through the drying process. And I'm happy that I can have a little go at sort of carving, just using a standard pen knife, just whittling away, trying to get somewhere near to the shape that I want. And, and don't forget guys, harvesting um, ash in this way is very similar to sort of coppicing hazel. Um, it's not really um, very harmful to the tree. Um, obviously this is just like a self-seeded ash at the roadside. It's been flayed several times by a tractor, you know, when they're cutting the roadside hedge. Um, so, but you know, for me, cutting this branch will not harm the tree in the, in the long term. Okay, so this is um, starting to take shape. Okay, so this is a couple of days later now, and there was a, a little knobble on the front which looked like a face. So I've gone down the route of incorporating a deer's head, and I thought that the antlers could um, branch up either side following the forks. Um, okay, so this is a couple of days later again, and I've finished carving the antlers and I've sanded everything down and what I'm doing here is I'm using a razor blade to cut very thin strips of leather from an old leather belt. It has to be real leather otherwise it won't be strong enough and you're about to see me mix up some epoxy resin. There we are. I'm going to use that to attach the leather to the top of the forks and that's going to stick them in place like so and then on the left hand side of the screen at the top of the board you can see some very thin nylon twine um, and I'm going to use that to secure the leather strips in place I'm just going to wrap it round and round and round and once that's tied off I'm then going to mix up some more epoxy resin here you go and this is the twine being tied off as you can see just wrap it round and round and round once that's on there, I'm going to mix up some more epoxy resin and then cover the whole, um, the whole outside of the twine and encase everything in clear resin. And that just really does secure everything in place and it also gives you a really good um, grip, finger grips. So here we are, nearly at the end of the process. All that's left is to attach the elastic. It's um, high grade surgical elastic. That's what gives it the power. Um, it's fairly straightforward. Just feed the elastic through the eyes at the, at the top that we've created with the leather bands, bend it back and tie it off. Um, but if you've enjoyed this video and you like the catapult, the end result, it could be yours. Um, simply subscribe and leave a comment and once I hit 250 subscribers, I will select a winner at random from the comments. So you must be a subscriber and you must have commented. But I hope you find this um, informative. Thank you for watching. See you next time.